Do you think that's what broke my hook? Oh my, what? That might actually be it. <laughs> that would make so much sense. Wow. We're just reviewing footage now and my mind is absolutely blown. Wow. Oh man! <laughs> oh man, that's a big one! <laughs> that's a good one. What's going on? Jay Siemens here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, um, we spent about half a year ice fishing. This is the end of the 2022 season, um, but you're probably gonna see this at the start of the 2022, 2023 season. Anyways, we are headed to Northern Manitoba to do some ice fishing. It's like the end of April. This is this is end times for the ice fishing season. We're making three different stops on this tour. The first stop, we're pike fishing at Simon Abyss Wayside Park on Cormorant Lake. We don't have tip-up bait. We got a little bit of tip-up bait, but not enough. We just are driving through Fairford on our way north. And I called up my buddy, Nate, and I said, hey, Nate, you got any bait? And he said, well, I actually, I have a company called Nate's Baits. So we're going to Nate's house to look for some bait. He's got tulipies. Well, how's it going? Yeah, so we've got either other, and we've got everything from that, like. Oh man, you do the small stuff too. too. Like that. Oh yeah. You know, Sunday dinner roaster size down to. Whatever. This is good, this is good bait. So I once had a company called Jay's Jigs. But, okay. But the I company, the company actually. Nate's Baits has a little better ring it's to it. It's got a ring. Uh, Jay's Jigs is pretty smoky. It, 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 it was good for, you know, probably, I think I did $150 a profit in 2007. And that oh, was- Oh, so we're right on par then. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, most of, that's the smallest I've got. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's these bad boys. Have you ever fished mullet minnows? No, but I definitely will. Oh like, yeah. Those are the bomb. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've got a few packets of those left. Yeah, I love I, th these. I think I'm just like, like this I right here is these. probably good. Like this right here will probably be, I'm so happy. I thought we were gonna have no bait on this. I think we're gonna be using hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. some catch cook for you. Let me grab some catch cook. <laughs> here you go. Look at this. What is this stuff then? It's so it's like some kind of a, like a coating then? You can dip That's... your bait in it and it'll attract the fish. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Crunchy. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, okay, there we go. You're the man. Nate's baits. We're gonna dedicate our first fish to Nate, Nathan Olson. Sweet dude. All right, safe travels. Have a good one. <laughs> All right, now we're heading north. Cormorant Lake, Big Pike. We're gonna be fishing tonight, hopefully. Greatfishingcanada.com, like that is a very good domain name. I wonder how long they've had that for. To the right, you have the campground. Lewis, <laughs> you have a dog, you've got the camp dog. We're gonna go check in with James, and then next time you see us, we'll probably be uh, unloading to our cabin. Welcome to the lake. Cormorant Lake. It's windy. All right, this is my first big road trip with the new trailer. And uh, it's just nice, so you can kind of put everything in here. Hopefully it's not too jumbled around. Didn't bounce around too much. It's good. What's cool about some of these big lakes in the north is you come here open water season and you're rolling the dice a little bit on the weather. If you can fish it, if it's too rough and stuff. I mean, that, that's with any big lake. The beauty of the winter is there's no waves to deal with. You can fish this pretty much any day of the season. And this is a beast of a lake. It's kind of tough to see through the trees. We'll probably overlay a nice drone shot. But anyways, we're right on the shore, cabin, like, it's amazing, just pull your sled right up. And we're the only ones staying here. He says there hasn't really been much ice fishermen here, which is crazy. And we were talking about it. And this is like a couple kilometers past Clearwater Lake, which is such an epic destination. And I've, I've had great trips on Clearwater fishing for lake trout and, and for pike for that matter. But people, I don't know, they're just scared of the gravel, I guess. And if you go a little bit further, you get to Cormorant. We have it all to ourselves, which is pretty sweet. So pike is the goal. Enough talking, we got gear to unload. All right, we got Mr. Brandon Byler behind the camera. He's gonna be fishing too. We're gonna have four tip-ups out. Two per person. What's your biggest bike, Brandon? 40 inches? Uh, 41 and a half. 41 and a half. See if we can beat that. We're gonna stay pretty close tonight. 
We're gonna fish not too far from the lodge tomorrow. We're gonna go on some exploratory missions. But uh, yeah, we got settled in. We'll give you a little tour of the cabin probably tomorrow. Yeah, it's like plus two outside. Pretty windy, but that's all right. We're gonna head out on the sled. It's, uh, there still seems to be a decent bit of snow on the ice. I, I think there's gonna be a ton of ice. I was talking to the guys before, and they said ice out might be like June at this rate. Um, but anyways, we got just fully loaded. We got rods, we got iFish Pros, we got camera gear, we got Brandon, and we got some actually some auto charting, some mapping from last time I still got on the machine. So here we go. All right, we made it out here. Uh, conditions are pretty good, other than the fact that there's still like four feet of ice. I was hoping a little more melt had happened, but this is just a crazy year. We're gonna drop the live scope down. We're gonna do a little scanning. Probably not gonna see too much. Like I'm not, ex I'm not expecting to see a bunch of pike just sitting there. This is kind of like a, a transitional spot. So this is the spot, flashback to me and my dad setting hooks. This is the spot where I think I caught a 42. We caught I'm so many 35 to 38s. There's a big weed bed here. Super shallow spawning bay in the back. Yeah, it's just, it's a little bit of a pinch point. I look at it and I'm like, wow, this isn't that much of a pinch point. But when you look over there in the scale of the ocean, this is a pinch point. So anyways, we're gonna drop the live scope down. I just wanna see how deep we are. I, I still had my charting from before and it showed about 10 feet deep, but we're doing four feet of ice. So yeah, this is kind of what I expected. Five, six feet, soft, very soft bottom. We are gonna drop down our first bait. Shout out Nate's baits for saving the day. This is like a little baby, little baby sucker. That looks so good. We're using an iFish Pro. This is like a tip up where you can use your rod. Such a sweet deal. I, you know, there's nothing wrong with your conventional tip up hand over hand action, but the iFish Pro, you can use your rod and it's, it's fun to fight the fish with. So we got a quick strike rig. We'll show you guys all the rigging and all that stuff. Northern Manitoba, the start of our tour. I am so pumped to be up here to end off the ice season. There's some big fish to live up here. Biggins. We're switching up, we got different types. We got like a Cisco, big Cisco, a little sucker, and then this is a, a mackerel, I guess. But I, I kind of want variety. We got more of the other stuff that Nate gave us, but kind of want to try it all. I think there should be pike in the area. We caught fish there in the fall. They said, I was talking to James, the owner of Simon Abyss Wayside Park. They catch them here in the spring. I mean, there's there's a bunch of bays. This one doesn't have a major feeding creek in the back. You know, I like a little bit of flowing water at this time of year, but we got time. All right, we're grabbing the bag of tools and the bump board and our biggest bait got hit. No line has moved. Let's look at the camera, see if there's a pike sitting down there. There's a little pike eating it. Oh, it's so small. Oh, he's so small. Well, I don't want to lose that bait. Good sign though. I'm gonna just real slowly because this is one of our nicest baits. I know I sound like a fish knob, but that fish couldn't even inhale the bait. But a very good sign to start off our trip in Northern Manitoba. Oh no. Oh, we got the bait. We got the bait and we got the pike. That bait is probably, yeah, a third or bigger. Almost, not half the size, but not far off. Barbless hook, gonna turn it gently. Fish is bleeding a little bit. We're gonna slide it right back. Anyway, so that's a very little pike. It's our nicest bait, gotta keep this. Keep this big boy safe. I've gotten into a habit of clipping these on and it just saves me in so many situations. When it's cold, every second counts. I mean, every second always counts, especially if it's a big fish and has a crazy fight. You know the deal. Flag, another flag. Brandon, it's your turn. Brandon, it's turn. My stubby legs can't run. <laughs> oh my God. Make sure everything is clear first before you set the hook. Hold oh, out of breath. Is your drag okay? He's on. <sighs> Doesn't seem too serious, eh? No. Might have swam towards you though. Oh yeah, that's a lot bigger than mine. That's a proper pike. A GSP is Tara would say. You know what GSP stands for? No. Good size pike. <laughs> nice. All right, give me a look there, Brando. Nice. Upgrade. Yep. Yeah. You got the hook. Okay, you can just reverse it and release it. 
Nice. Hooks are out. He's spilling worms everywhere. There she goes. Two fish in. Whew, I'm out of shape. Brandon's what ha what what's happened since last? Uh, um, I put on season. a couple pounds. You know, Jay's got me locked up in the editing dungeon, so getting on my bot a little bit. But no, no, no. But like, what what major life event happened? I got engaged. We didn't even keep you updated. We didn't even tell you that Brandon got a girlfriend. But he not only got a girlfriend, he got engaged. And I, I wish I could take credit for it because I was trying to be the wingman. I will take zero credit. Grunthal, Manitoba. Jenna, if you're watching, you got a nice man who catches good sized pikes. Um, hopefully some bigger sized pikes yet. But hey, flags, flags are popping. That's, if we get a flag every half hour, we're gonna run out of bait in a hurry. Wow. Once you see that top swivel move. Yep. Are those your walleyes? Oh. I don't know what fish nose is down like that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll drop a I'd spool a line and a little tantrum or something, or a little rattle, or I don't know. We'll try something. Yeah. Because that definitely ain't happening. Okay, I'm going four pound test. We're going light. Let me know if my bait's close to bottom. Yeah, they're like right underneath me now. Right there. Go, go up a little bit. Right there. Hold it right there. Yeah, just keep snapping it there. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, keep doing that. Okay, he's getting closer. There's there's two of them coming in. Keep doing that, keep doing that. Lift it a little higher. Yeah, 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 keep it right there. He's rising up for it. Get ready. Oh, he just swerved you at the last second. Oh no. There's two of them on you right now. Oh, going. yeah! <laughs> Lost him, Lost him. Oh. oh. He's still there. Oh, come on. He's coming back. Just keep, keep it right there near the bottom. Got him. Got him. Wow, not what I expected. I thought for sure these are walleyes turning out to be whitefish. We're gonna bring that guy home a smoke on the rattle bait. That's crazy, that shows you how aggressive they are. On the old frostbite tantrum. All right, we're keeping that guy. All right, well, we caught the mystery fish. It was a whitefish. Yeah, two, two little pike right at the start and that was it. I wasn't the most excited about this spot, but I, I just have so much more confidence with flowing water with a creek in the back. And yeah, there isn't that. This is a nice boggy bay, but I want a little bit of flow. So anyways, we're gonna pack up. This was our little partial day. Tomorrow, we are gonna go swing for the fences. We're gonna go try. Well, hopefully the first spot we pick is just nonstop flags and we run out of bait in like, you know, a couple hours, but we'll see. We got options, we'll move around. That's a wrap for day one at Cormorant Lake in Northern Manitoba. Oh, hi, welcome back to day two. We had a great sleep, but woke up to a bit of a, I don't wanna say blizzard, but it's snowing pretty good outside. End of April and our winter just keeps going. It will be nice for the snow machine though. It is nice to have a little, a little snow when you're going along the lake. But um, yeah, we got a full day. Sunset is nine o'clock. So even though it's like 8.30 now and we're getting like a little bit of a later start, we're still gonna have so much time on the lake. First we're cooking some progies and some eggs. And we're gonna give you guys a quick little tour. This is actually the same cabin that my dad and I stayed in when we were here two years ago, pike fishing. Perfect little fisherman getaway. Everything you need, big old kitchen. Living area, overflow for all the gear, that's that's key. Overflow for gear, because I, and fishermen in general, just bring too much gear. Two bedrooms back there, bathroom, flat screen TV, pierogies, it doesn't come with the pierogies, but you can bring your own. That's pretty much it. Simon Nabis, Wayside Park. 2022, the winter that never ends. That's all right, means more ice fishing. I think from like my first day of the ice season till now, like 160 days maybe, maybe closer to 170 days. We have a long winter up here, especially if you're willing to drive north. Yeah, I, I, it'd be a weird feeling for some of you guys that live in the southern states that only have this month or two of ice season. Look at this dog. Come here, little doggy. Come here, little doggy. Hey, buddy. Well, that was a first for me. I'm not sure if we got any decent footage, but we saw two woodland caribou in the middle of the lake. I was so confused. We were like 
five miles from shore and all of a sudden I see these two big objects and I'm like, they look like the height of humans, but there's no snow machines. I'm like, they're not ice shacks. And then I got closer and just these big long-legged horses it looked like out there. And we followed by them a little bit, but I didn't want to scare them too much. They were running pretty fast when we picked up speed on the sled, so. There's a pike right under us right now. Look at that pike. You can see his fins. He's one, two, almost three feet long. Look at that! <laughs> Daggy! Get him! That was crazy. That was a good sized pike. All right, well, we're gonna start setting. We're, uh, we're a little further out at the mouth of this bay, five, six feet of water, some old scattered weeds. I've never really cared about weeds too much when I've been pike fishing. Oh, he might be down there. Oh yeah, he's there. That pike is there. Oh, he's gonna eat it. He's staring at it. He just ate it. That's as good as it gets right there, baby. We got the meat stick. This is the slugger. This is by Frostbite 46, extra heavy. And I think this is a decent sized fish. He's just sitting there. And with a big bait like that, I kind of want him just to make sure he repositions it nicely. Sometimes they'll just kind of grab it part way, but I got a good feeling. That was, that was cool. So tough to say, he's kind of just hanging out right here. I think we lost him. No, he's there. We're on. It's not tiny. Play that. Oh ho ho. I've never had this rod buckled like this before. He's just right there. Oh man, we are in borderline blizzard conditions. This is our first full day at Cormorant and we have a big angry Manitoba pike. Yeah, this has uh, got some weight. Oh, she's right here. Well, that's a good fish. Nothing wrong with that. But look at this fatty. Just start it off. Cormant Lake and uh, day two, off to a very good start. Didn't even get the tip up set. Probably about a 34, 35 inch maybe. Barely out of the water. That cooked my hands pretty good. We did bring the shack along today and I think we might want to set it up, but that's good. Hopefully not the only pike here, but yeah, slid out a little deeper from the spawning bay and uh, I think we'll set some tip ups here. Better than anything we saw yesterday, and that was right away. Man, we're just trying to set this up, and there's a pike coming in right at it. Come on. This underwater footage is insane. It is so clear. So clear. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that was good. <laughs> oh, baby. Wow. That's a pretty big fish, too. That was unreal. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Brandon? Well, I think that was a pretty, pretty epic start to pretty the day. Pretty epic start to the day. You couldn't really ask for a better start to a day than that. I think that might be a little bit of a better one. It looked pretty fat. When are we gonna see, see some movement? It ate it just so perfect. I think it might be stuck at the bottom or something. We can just guide his jaw back. You can see him right there. Yeah, he's not getting. Right there, there we go. Ooh, that's a nice fish, dude. Here he comes. Oh man, that's a big one. Don't, don't, don't be too tight yet. Just try to keep him from going back down if you can. Just let her, let her thrash a little bit, unless all of a sudden the hook pops out, then jam your arm down. But okay, just wait. Dude, <laughs> that's a big one. All right, Brandon. Oh, <laughs> Brandon. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Buddy. Look how thick that pike is. That is why we came. That is a Manitoba gator. All right, let's get her back in the water. Hold him in the water. I'll help you unhook it. That was unreal. Could you see the strike over I did, my yeah. I, I glanced over and saw it. That was unreal. Uh, all right, we got fish unhooked. We're going to give you one more look. We, we forgot the bump board at the last spot where we drilled the hole. So we're going to mark it on the rod, which I know, I know marking on the rod is not a good way to measure a fish, but it's all we got right now. So anyways, okay, tail until halfway um, in that duct tape. Yeah. All right, one more look and we'll put them back. Look. That's got to be pretty close to 40. That That's just a tank. Like, that fish makes the trip. Woo! All, All right. right, buddy. Let's slide her back. <laughs> Look at that belly. Yeah, that's 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 a good April pike. This bait's done good. Good job, boy. <laughs> yeah, buddy! Woo! Let's go. Was that your fattest pike ever? Definitely my fattest pike ever, yeah. 
Nice fish wow. Manitoba baby. That is Woo. a slob. And the thing that makes that just so sweet is getting the strike on the aqua view. Like those are the things that I just, I love so much is like, I saw that. I did not think that fish was that big, but it's it's deceiving sometimes. But this Cisco, Nate, <laughs> Nate's baits. Nate's baits. We dedicate that fish to you. All right, well, we're gonna measure the rod. And I know, I know, I'm the guy that makes fun of people and they're like, ah, I had to measure it on my rod. But from the tip of the rod until the edge of the reel underneath. So pretty much halfway from the reel handle to the edge of the tape. 40 inches, 40, maybe 40 and a quarter. Wow, Nothing nice. wrong with that. P pretty much a PB for Brown. I think 40 and a half you said was your biggest? 41 and a half, yeah. 40, okay, never mind. Yeah. Not <laughs> Fattest pike. Fattest pike ever. Fattest pike. Longest pike through the ice on Cormorant Lake in April on an iFish Pro with Jay Siemens. There's my longest pike through the ice though. We are going to pop some holes with the Ion Alpha and uh, then we're going to make a little spread, but this seems to be a good little central location. I know the Master Angler is nice getting that 41 inch trophy, but nice fat pike like that. Mm. Mm. Um, as far as frostbite rods that work good with iFish Pros for pike and lake trout, we've kind of got, uh, you know, a, a few options. This is the Mr. Big. This is probably the most standard, your safe bet across the board. The one we caught those big fish on is the Slugger. That's a 46 extra heavy. That's like for the north, for big fish. This one is, I would say, has probably more uses. This is the 43 heavy. We've also got the Drama Queen, which is a 46 medium heavy or heavy, I'm not even sure on the stats. You know, one of the most important things is, yeah, heavy rod is great, but your line is everything. As you saw with that last fish, you know, things can get caught at the bottom of the ice. That line can dig in, the swivels can dig in, and you just, you don't want to worry about the line because you're using a big steel leader. They're not going to be line shy typically. So this is, I wouldn't go lighter than 20 or 30 pound braid. The one on the slugger is 60 pound braid on a big heavy spinning reel, but yeah, like a, a 3000 size spinning reel, you can fit a lot of line on. Then we're going to a steel quick strike rig. You really shouldn't ever break off a fish on a tip up. I, I've had it happen, it happened to me last season. You know, line got a little bit worn in one spot, I wasn't paying attention, but typically like, you should be using beefy gear to shorten. You don't want it in an hour long fight. I know there's times where you hook, you know, a big pike on a walleye rod, but it's not ideal. So anyways, we are setting our fourth and final line. Oof, you gotta pop that bait, make sure there's no air in it. So you can use a knife and cut some holes or just give it a good squeeze because otherwise it might not sink. Keep that bail open. All right, now we're gonna go set up the shack. We got four lines kind of spread out here. So anyways, we're gonna get out of the wind. We didn't even bring a heater, but just to get out of the snow and wind, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice and warm, so. We got a fish, we got a fish, we got a fish. All right, Brandon went to go check the tip up and I guess the snow froze the flag down. I don't know what I'm saying, but I think we got a fish on here. Yeah. Brandon's on. What do you think? I think it's really squirrely. So what happened was the, the uh, snow must have held the flag down. It looked like the snow held the, was stopping the flag from going anywhere, yeah. The rod is just corked. So he just hooked, hooked to the bottom of the hole, his head. Oh, he's caught in the camera. All right, took a little bit of work. Give me a quick little look. Nice, and we're gonna put her back. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, he got, he was on there, I guess, for a little bit. He got caught in the camera. Yeah. I just checked the flag and saw there's some snow piling up on it, but just with how much snow's coming down, how it's blowing it, it just, it pinned that flag down. That's something you just you need to check as you go, and I was checking it, but all good. That was a bit of a silence without a flag, but good that there's still some pike moving around. We broke the curse of two fish. Yeah, we're gonna get baited up and drop right back down. There can be feeding windows. I think I've told the story before, but I've gone hours though catching fish, and then like all the flags start popping. So sometimes the pike just turn on.
Plague, 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 plague. All right, it's my turn, boys. Let's go. She's moving. She's moving some line. I like it. So what else I like to do sometimes is while I'm keeping it slack, I'm gonna close it and just check my drag. My drag's good. Clear any slush out. Wait till he starts moving again. He's moving. Hooked up, not big. Might even be gone. Nope, swimming towards me. Little baby head shakes. We're okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, it's not like 15 inches long. I think she's gonna be up pretty quick. Oh, remember that pike that jumped out the hole? I thought that was gonna happen again. Nice little fat pike. Nothing wrong with that. These long hemostats, like it's such a cheap investment, but it just saves, saves the fish. And this fish one day is gonna be big. There's a time in my life when I got so excited for a 30 inch pike and then, you know, I guided and just fished hard and you know, now 40 is kind of the goal. 50 is the goal one day. I've, I've seen 150 inch pike in my lifetime. It was pretty spectacular. And I'd like to see another. I'd like to see one in my hands one day. And, and I think this lake has a 50 inch pike. 50 inch pike is just, that is a true, true fish of a lifetime. And maybe, maybe it'll happen today. I'd probably cry if I got a 50 inch pike, to be completely honest. Anyways, we're gonna put another bait on, get back down. Another flag, another flag, another flag. Oh, he's got so much line out. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh. This might be a little bit better. This fish has some weight. Oh, baby. I'm happy we hooked this one on the big rod. This is the hole Brandon got his big one out of. <sighs> Sometimes this setup, I'm like, ah, it might be overkill. And then you hook something like this and it's like, no, this is not overkill. I feel like the line's hooking on the bottom. I lost it. Oh. Look how much line it had out. Did something break? Oh, that was a heartbreak. Oh man, look at that. I have never ever had that happen before on a quick strike. The treble broke. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable, I've never had a treble break. Oh, that hurts. Wow. Well, the underwater footage will show if that was a big fish or not, that wasn't a small fish. Like I was just saying, it can go from slow to madness right away in there, we just we just released that other fish and then had a big one on here. Wow, the hook broke. Well, we're gonna put a bait out on this rig for now. I'll have to make a new rig, but that is heartbreaking. It is always the weakest link that breaks. And that was like the bend of the treble. Like, I, I honestly don't even understand how, how that happened. Like right in the middle, of, yeah, I've just, I've seen hooks bend out, but just a snap like that. That's like a 3X triple grip. I don't know, I don't know what to say. I don't, it, I just finished my little spiel about a 50 inch pike. Was that a 50 inch pike? Man. We were just starting to pack up. We hadn't had a flag in quite a while. I did see one or two on the aqua view. And uh, yeah, it's so bright. These days are so long. It's like, ooh, there's some ice on here. I'm just gonna kind of slowly pull up that line and see if I can feel a fish on here. I think, it, I think it dropped it. That's too bad. Never put any hooks into it. That was a little excitement to end the day. Well guys, we were in the process of packing up. We are gonna finish packing up. That is the end of part one at Simon DeBiss Wayside Park. Thanks to James for the hospitality. And we got a good fish today. You know, it started with a bang. I was like, wow, this is, this is not what I was expecting. And then another one. And then it was, it was a little slower throughout the day. Like I've said probably 12 times, that big fish is gonna haunt me for a very long time, but our mission was accomplished. We caught a big cormorant pike, but we're going out again tomorrow. Not sure where, not sure with who. Well, probably Brandon will be there. And uh, we're gonna be soaking some more baits. This one got pretty chewed up by something. Anyways, guys, Northern Manitoba. It is ice fishing paradise up here. Uh, check out Huntfish Manitoba for a bunch of different locations, videos, and thanks to them for making this video possible.
All right, this may be the wildest cup I'll ever capture. Do you think that's what broke my hook? Oh my, what? That might actually be it. That would make sense. Yes. Broke your hook on an otter. I think I broke my hook on an otter. That would make so much sense. That's it? Yeah, that has to be it. That makes sense. What else would be able to have that much? I feel so much better, and I'm so glad that we didn't pull that otter out the hole. That's what it was. <laughs> that had to be what it was. Wow. We're just reviewing footage out. My mind is absolutely blown. Wow.